Anyone else quickly wants to come and share? You know, it's very important to come and share the testimonies. Because then you know exactly that God is working in this place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. No one else? Okay. So, we have uh, Vernika, Abigail is going to come and share something. And then I will come. Uh, but uh, listen to them. Because they are going to share something very important. And uh, again, I'm telling you, uh, we are here, we are going to preach deep. There's no way we are going to preach simple here. Okay. So the, the idea is, I don't know whether you understand or you don't understand. That's completely okay. But we are going to preach deep. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, whatever I'm going to share, I have really not prepared for anything. So whatever is going to come out is going to be very raw. Uh, I think uh, 2021 has been like a roller coaster ride for me in uh, every respect, and definitely spiritually, because uh, in uh, this year or maybe uh, ever since lockdown has started, we know that everything has turned upside down, right? So exactly what was happening in the world was exactly what was happening with me because just in 2020, Vernal started bringing altogether a different uh, dimension of teachings. And, and I was like, what is going on? I, I, I mean, I was struggling every single day with whatever he was teaching. But uh, in, in my course of uh, spiritual, uh, you know, ever since I've come to God, uh, ever since... Uh, my first encounter with God until now, I knew one thing about God was God cannot be put in a box. Like every time I thought that God was done, I knew that he was opening up something new. So I knew one thing was, though I couldn't completely relate to everything that he was saying or everything that he was bringing, I was struggling tremendously. But I knew one thing was God is... God is vast. We can't put him in a box and we can't wrap our mind around how big and how vast and how great and how magnificent he is. So, uh, and, and there, are, there, is, there are a couple of other preachers also whom we, are, we, whom we listen to and under whose mentorship we, we are kind of growing. So, and at the same time, there was, uh, things were synchronizing because he also was talking about the same things. And here I was struggling like a mad person. And there is already so much of pressure, right? Because he is teaching something. I am not able to uh, sync with that. So I was struggling within myself. But there's one thing that kept me going was God is not, he, he is not the little that we know. We see God in a very small perspective, but God is so big. Like I remember ever since uh, my first encounter with God was in 2006. So I, and every time I used to have those encounters, I used to feel like this is it, this is it, it cannot go beyond this. But I knew every time God exceeded himself, every time he exceeded himself to show me how big he was, how good he was, how magnificent he was, and how my, you know, how my mind uh, had to always expand to receive more. So now, ever since 2021, uh, despite everything that I have personally gone through, uh, finally, I think uh, uh, I came to a place where I started seeing things differently. Uh, uh, I started seeing things differently. And one thing that really worked well for me was... Uh, God is in God is in me, right? And I should be able to see God in everything. And there's one thing that I keep telling myself, which I obviously learned from Vernal and others, that God created everything in Genesis. We know that everything was created by God. Nothing has just come just like that, right? So everything God has created. And when he has created everything, he said it was good. Right? So everything that he's created, he created and he created good. So uh, a couple of things that I've learned in this year was 
Do not judge anything as good. Do not judge anything as bad. Just be outside and observe. And then things will start making sense. Even what I look as bad, will, I will be able, when I don't judge that thing as bad, I, I will start seeing how, start seeing the very purpose for which God had created. Because the Bible says, God created all things. And he created, and through him is everything. And he created all things for him. Yeah, so everything that we see, you know, everything that we can lay our eyes on is created by God and it is created for Him. So I think this was something that I was uh, pondering on and this was something I was letting to take uh, my, uh, you know, letting myself absorb. So I came to a place where I wouldn't, I'm trying, I'm not, I'm not perfect yet, but uh, I'm trying to not judge anything. I'm not trying to condemn because all this while, uh, ever, ever since we've been brought up, ever since we are in this uh, Christian uh, thing, you know, uh, ever since we've been brought up, like right from my childhood, learning the Ten Commandments, we, we immediately put everything into a good compartment and we put everything into a bad compartment. So we, we categorize everything as either good or either bad. So this, this has been my journey of not looking at anything as good or anything as bad but just observing it and letting God show me how that thing is working for me. Uh, and I'm going to be very uh, vague in this. And I have seen, uh, let's admit that everyone does wrong, right? You do wrong, I do wrong. Uh, just because I am a preacher's wife doesn't mean that I am any saint. And just because he is preaching doesn't mean that he is also any saint, right? So we, there are certain things that we do which are not correct or or which maybe should happen, shouldn't happen. And then we start going into a trip of guilt. We start into going into condemnation. But I have come to this place where even if I do something that is not so good in our uh, uh, labeling, I know in that God shows me something. You know, he shows me how good he is. He shows me how how he can take that and use it to bring me out of something, you know. So I have come to this place, again, I'm not perfect, but I've come to this place of balance, of not wanting to, at least not wanting to judge. Whether I do it or not is secondary, but at least I know that I don't want to judge everything as good or bad. So uh, long story short, uh, last, last Sunday after the session, uh, Vernal has been telling me for, for some time to try some different ways of prayer, which because of my logical, and I'm very rational uh, at times, you know, I'm very rational uh, considering the fact that how we bought our culture and all that. So last Sunday, however, I thought like, okay, let me do it. And, uh, and I, I took some time out and I started praying and, and I got into uh, you know, the first thought that came to me that God has created everything for him and everything that he created is good. So the minute I, I let that thought just come to me, I, I had some barriers broken and I could experience God in a completely different way. You know, in a completely different way, in a completely new dimension. So, uh, so if I had not to do that, if I had not to look at something that the world thinks as bad or the world labels as incorrect or the, you know, just call it bad, I wouldn't have been able to have that experience of my life. Yeah? So in, in, in me sharing this, what I want to tell you all is, uh, when you all come to this service, you know, because we, uh, Vernal doesn't teach regular, right? He doesn't teach what everybody teaches. So I... Uh, I want you all to, or I want to submit to you all, don't judge anything. Just observe. Like, like 2020, I couldn't accept everything that was happening. Like be it with Vernal or be it with Kirby that we follow. I, I was struggling. But there's one thing that kept, me good, that kept me going was God can't be put in a box. And God will always surprise you. You know? So never limit God to anything. So, so... So when, when, you, when you are challenged, you know, when you come to a place like, like this, you will see that every day is a challenge. 
and you don't have to trust me you don't have to accept everything that is said in the first place i think if you accept it there's something wrong with you but you need to constantly be thinking you need to constantly be questioning you need to constantly be uh, uh, asking yourself and uh, when you're asking yourself because it is God inside of you right you he will start uh, showing you things so that you are teaching yourself and you are teaching yourself through experience yes so that is what I want to say that uh, when you when you encounter something new right people we've had so many people come and go but everyone who left was because they were offended so you should never get offended when you come to God because we have a very uh, and we have a very uh, limited way to see what what god is and what he can do but i think and at that time it was it was exactly what we needed but now there is a new season that has opened up where we are seeing god is opening up new things and if you're not going to it's okay to get offended okay but it is not good to stay offended it's okay unless and until you are offended, you will not grow in your understanding about how good he is. Okay, so it is okay to be offended, but it is not good to stay offended. It is not good to walk in that offense. You, because he's such a good God, he says, you know, ask and I will give it to you. He says that seek me and you will find me, right? So when you get offended, ask God, ask him to show you, ask him to clarify it for you. He's a very good father and he will not keep you in the dark. He will constantly start showing you because God is already so big, right? But because he knew that we cannot become him, he becomes us. And he, this big God, which our whole mind cannot think, he decided to take the form of man and he became Jesus and he came to our level so that we can understand him. So if he can do that for us, why will he not, you know, with whatever you are struggling with right now, why will he not explain it to you the way exactly you can understand? Okay, so, so to stay in offense is not a good thing. I will just like to tell you a small thing from, uh, from Exodus. We know uh, the, the Israelites were the people who, who saw the goodness of God at such a great extent, right? We know that they saw the seven plagues. They saw, they saw the plague of the firstborn. We, they saw wherein uh, the firstborn of only the Egyptians dies and the Israelites were saved. They saw God parting water for them they got, so that they could walk and they could cross over into, into, into Israel. But this people of Israel, all, this people of Israel were always offended. Their main, their main thing was they always stayed offended with God. They always stayed offended with the person, their leader, that was Moses. And they always questioned and they always questioned his integrity and questioned his authority. And we know that because of the offense that they stayed in, they could never cross into their promised land. And we know that a journey, I think, which was of, supposed to be a seven-day journey, actually took them 40 years just roaming in the wilderness just because of their offense that they were carrying. And uh, if we read that whole story, we know that the, another characteristic about them was they always murmured. They were always complaining. They were always grumbling about everything. In everything that Moses did or in everything that God was doing for them through Moses, they always grumbled and they always complained. So that was something that did not let them walk into the promise that God had set for them. So what I want to leave you with is, uh, in, in, in your life, in your day-to-day -day life, first thing is, do not put God in a box. Be open that God will show you himself in new things. When, when there is a new teaching that comes to you, don't immediately shut it off saying that this is not right or this is not wrong. You know, we immediately say this, and all that thing we come up with, right? So we immediately shut God and we do not let God show us his greater perspective. 
Okay, so that is one thing we need to know. Never put God in a box. Always be open for, for God to show you things in a new way. And when he does that, your experiences are of him, of his goodness, his compassion is always going to be bigger and is always going to be greater. And it is going to uh, uh, bypass every experience that you've had in the past. Second thing is never stay in a place of offense. Like I said, we need to get offended if we want to experience more. Because see, if, if we don't, we get offended only when something new comes. Like, like in, in history, there was a time where people used to get offended with, with the gift of healing. If you go, I think, some years, years back, people used to be offended with the gift of healing. But it's only after people were offended and there was, and people pressed in, we now see miraculous he healings coming. There were times where people used to be offended with the gift of speaking in tongues. But it's only when some people who went before us pursued it and were persevered in that, today we have, we have the benefit of speaking in tongues and, you know, getting the benefit of tongues. So today we are now in a place where God is releasing a completely new dimension of his goodness, his magnificence, and how we see him in everything. Because all this while we were not used to, we were always used to separating things as some godly and some evil, right? So now, I, now what we need to do is let that thing arise inside us. Let that thing settle inside us. Let God show us things of how everything is one. We are, not, we are not separated. We are all one. And we are one with everything that God has created. And everything that he's created, he's created it good and he's created it for us so that we experience him more closely. And, and, and then what I want to say is, uh, do not, uh, do not in, in offense, do not start grumbling like as the Israelites they always grumbled and complained about everything and what was supposed to take seven days took 40 years. If we are going to do that, we are going to uh, distance ourselves from getting into our blessing. So we need to have this sense and this uh, attitude of gratitude for everything. Even when something comes which our, our natural mind cannot understand, we need to have this attitude of gratitude that God will show us himself in this thing. And when we are constantly grateful about things, we will see goodness will just start opening in our life. Because when we are grateful is when we are creating a path for God to enter. You know, if, if there is anything we need to change in my, in this experience that I had, one thing that I realized very strongly was uh, our mind is everything, you know, everything is our mind. If we have our mind right, rightly centered and rooted on God and everything that he is, we can accomplish everything, okay? But our mind is our strength as well as it is our weakness. If there is something that we are not able to receive or achieve is only because our mind is our block. There is nothing else that is stopping us. So what is very important is that, you know, the scripture that says, do not be conformed to the things of this world, but rather be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And I actually realize how, how uh, impactful and how deep that scripture is. If we can only program our mind to, uh, to the goodness of God and constantly make sure that our mind is submitted to God. Constantly make sure that our thoughts are submitted to God. I think every challenge that we are facing, we will be able to uh, accomplish it. If you really see, you know, uh, sometimes we see that exactly what we were worrying about happens. I don't know if you have experience, but at least I have and I have realized that things that I'm constantly worrying about, uh, I, have, uh, I have experienced that. Or things that I am like constantly thinking about is exactly what tends to happen. And I used to 
think of it as this was a warning or this was something that God was telling me that will happen. But then later on, I now realized that is not the thing. The thing is, by thinking about it and by dwelling on those thoughts, I actually created my reality. And then I looked at it as if I was prophesying my future, which is not correct. The thing is, because I dwell on certain negative things or certain not so good things, that is exactly what has happened, correct? So it was not God warning me that something of that sort would happen, but it was by me constantly dwelling on that, by me constantly putting my thoughts, my attention, my focus on that, I have created my own reality. So, so we, all of us, we are like last, uh, last couple of weeks, Monal has been telling us that we are Christ, right? And uh, as human beings give birth to God, uh, to human beings, a dog gives birth to a dog, God gives birth to God himself, right? So in us, we know that God created everything by speaking in Genesis, we saw that. So how much more do we have the power to create? So if we want to create our reality, the two things we need to do is, one, we need to align our thoughts to the reality constantly, keep our thoughts focused on what we want to see, and second is, we just need to be grateful for that, and we just need to speak those things into existence. So it's very important that we are sensitive to what kind of attitude we are showing in our day-to-day -day life. Like, like the Israelites, are we constantly murmuring? And murmur need not be just complaining by words. It can also be the condition of your heart. Are you always sad? Are you always negative? Are you always uh, having negative emotions working on the inside of you? And if that is what is happening, that means uh, we are having murmur in our heart. But if you are, we have to change and transform that to being constantly positive, being constantly uh, thankful, knowing that we have the power to create our reality. God is on the inside of us and he is on my side. And what I desire to have is exactly what he wants to manifest in my life. So whatever I desire to see right now, I should be able to see that, visualize that, and be thankful and grateful that that exactly is, is what God is wanting to do and he is pretty much, uh, in fact, perfectly aligned to make sure that that is what he is doing for me. So this is something that I had to share. Hallelujah. So, important thing to take back from all that she said. Okay, because when she's saying, she's giving you a lot of information, okay? But I want you to highlight the important things. Is, and that's where I'm also going to share about what she has spoken about. Is uh, your mind is very important. How you are in your mind is how your life is going to be. 